Hi, my name is Courtney, and I'm going to be interviewing Mother Blackwell. And I'm, I'm going to be interviewing Woody King. What does Black History mean to you as a man of faith? Hi, Courtney. Thank you for that question. Um, Courtney, I believe as a man of faith, celebrating Black history is an opportunity for us um, to look back and look back at our history as uh, a people in this country. Um, certainly no other race of people in this country uh, have endured what we as Black people have endured in this country. So when we think about coming through things like slavery and segregation and, and Jim Crow, you know, there have been a lot of adversity, there's been a lot of tragedy, um, but there have also been a lot of triumphs for our people. Um, so I think as a man of faith, it's just an opportunity for me to thank God from where he brought us from. Um, you know, certainly we've come through all of that and we've arrived at a place where black people now have many opportunities, you know, um, you know, black people are living well and um, we're thriving. Certainly we have a long way to go to still be recognized as equals on a lot of fronts, um, but we certainly can celebrate um, that we are where we are and we've come through what we've come through. Tell us, uh, tell us about a moment of black history. Oh my goodness, two, two, two moments of black history that I never shall forget. Number one, the ride to 1968. In 1968, I shall never forget that. That was the most frightening thing I had ever seen. And um, it's something that's in the memory. And my sons, that my grandsons let me know my time is running out. But the most memorable uh, thing that I remember in 1960, uh, back in 1968 was sitting under the same roof with the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. And uh, he was speaking on segregation. And he said that there was a time that man and segregation came together. And from there came the birth of integration. And I was so excited. I was so happy to see this man and to hear this man. As y'all know, I don't drive. I put all of my money in the basket, everything I had. I put in the collection basket because he was such a great uh, speaker. And I, I was so happy to be able to tell my children, my grandchildren, and now my great grandchildren, I sat under the same roof with the Reverend Dr. Martin. Um, I think for me, um, the most significant event in Black history that I've witnessed in my lifetime would definitely have to be the election of um, President uh, Barack Obama. Um, I think me and a lot of other people probably never thought we would see um, a black president in our lifetime. Um, so that will always stand out as, as monumental to me. I can remember, um, you know, that election was in 2008 and I volunteered to work the election polls. It was something I had never done before, um, something I've never done since, but I knew that that time was going to be, you know, just his, historical. And I remember just the unity of our people coming into the election polls um, to vote for um, Barack Obama. A lot of them really had no interest in voting for anybody else in any other election. You know, they just wanted to come in and cast that vote. Um, so I think that's something that I will never forget. Even that night um, when they finally brought, uh, broadcast the results and he won, it was just surreal. Like, like really this is happening to us. So yeah, that will always stand out to me as one of the huge events in black history that I've witnessed in my lifetime. Never forget the price. Never forget the price that was paid for us because there was a price that was paid for us and it was a big price, but we made it. God was with us. We were praying women, we were praying men and through all of our hardships, even if we had to go into our little huts and be quiet and pray because we never knew when they were gonna knock on the door and let you know, no praying in there, no praying in there. Cut out that foolishness, cut out that foolishness. But we trusted God and we believed God. And look at us now, we had teachers, lawyers, doctors. We had all kinds of people that I used to hear my grandmother say, one day, one day I will have doctors and lawyers and teachers in my family. And I can remember being a little girl of maybe six or seven. And I was saying to myself, Grandma, you really lost it now. You really lost it. But guess what? We have a lot of them in my family now. In my family now, there are a lot of professional people. And so it's just not uncommon 
when these grandchildren, their great grandchildren, walk up and they say, "Well, what are you doing? What's on your mind?" They say, "Well, you know, Grandma, I'm going to be like my uncle Ronnie. I'm going to be a physician's assistant, or I'm going to be like my aunt uh, 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 baby. I'm going to be the teacher, or I'm going to be the doctor." And I sit back and I remember my grandmother. Over seventy some years, said that this day would come, and the only thing that I want to say: never give up the dream. Never give up the dream. Courtney, God created you not just had something to do because He was sitting there idle that day, but He was creating a great young lady that one day she would sit down and interview people about what it was like, the way we got to Black History Month. Um, what I would like to share with the next generation about our history, number one, is just, you know, know your history, study your history. Um, and, you know, one of our greatest resources for history is our seniors and our elders. And I would encourage the young people to get to know the seniors and the elders in their families and in their communities um, and sit down and have a conversation with them. Um, because a lot of the history that we read about in our textbooks and that we study online, our seniors and elders, you know, they've lived it. There was an entertainer, and his name was James Brown. And I never shall forget, he wrote a song, Say It Loud, I'm Black and I'm Proud. And I will never forget that. Hold your head up, be proud, because God don't make junk. So you, you, you can do anything you want to do. Just make up your mind. I don't care what nobody said. 